payment class. Oops. I, now I have to stop eating. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, all right. Welcome to the June 28, 2023 meeting of the Amherst Mass Conservation Commission. Um, we have the four hearings on the agenda, but three of them are going to be continued. So the only hearing we have is the amended notice of intent for 29 Mill Street. I thought that was Mill Lane. Mill Lane. Yeah. Mill Lane at yes. 740. Um, Dave can't make it tonight. So we're going to jump right in to any land management updates. I'm pulling up to see if we even have any. Yeah, there are a couple. Yeah, I'll make it really, really quick. Uh, really quick. Um, so we have a land management subcommittee meeting scheduled for July 7th. I'm thinking that's going to be fairly administrative. Um, and basically the intention being to set a schedule for the, you know, remaining year and moving forward. Um, so that'll be sort of the start. And, and that's, um, I think, what, next Friday, but uh, we will be, you know, that date, that day or time might change. So um, anybody who's interested, and particularly, um, I see, I see Bruce and Jason Dorney in the audience, our new members as of July 1st. If you folks are interested in attending the land management subcommittee meeting, um, we would love to have you to jump into that. Um, the other piece is just an update on the land management policy document that we've been working on. Um, I know Alex emailed me about that. And um, I, so where that stands is basically that I've gone through it and I've updated everything that I can update. I've made all the revisions that I can make. There are several things which warrant additional discussion as to whether they get incorporated or not. Um, there's several areas where things need to be refined a little bit. So I'm um, thinking that we might potentially take a look at that and determine what sections can be approved. It might be approved section by section, um, but I think we kind of have to strategize as to how to move that forward, um, but still allow time to sort of um, finalize or refine some specific sections. That's basically all I wanted to share about that. Okay, Alex, did you have a question? On I don't have a question. I, um, I'm not sure I can make the seventh. We had a death in the family. It's going to take us out of town. Okay. So the seventh and eighth. Okay. That's Friday and Saturday. I wonder if we could back it up to Thursday. Um, I will make a note of that and I'll check in with you three via email. Okay. Yep. Um, so the sixth at noon. Or some other date, but. Okay. <clears throat> um, these kinds of things uh, need to be attended. Of course. Of course. All right. Any other questions about land use planning? Michelle? Um, Aaron, is the land use plan in a, in a, um, the land managed yeah, land use plan in a position where we could look it over again? Or is it, is it like individually or we need to just bring it to the meeting piece by piece? Um, yeah, so I, I can certainly share the, the final version that I have and why don't, let me, let me take a quick look at that, um, in the next few days, just to make sure that I have it where it needs to be to share it. And then, um, I can share it. Is that something I, you, do you want me to share with the whole board or just the subcommittee or what? Um, well, I'm just interested in seeing everyone's comments because I put mine in first and I haven't seen any like responses or subsequent comments. So, yeah, I'm so. Um, and just to that, Michelle, I'll just comment that some, I did incorporate some of the changes, some of the changes I didn't where I felt like it warranted additional discussion. So there are places where, like, for example, if somebody said, um, I have a question about this, and I think it should be removed for this reason. If there was a logical reason for it being there, I kept it. Um, suggestions where it was like something that I felt warranted discussion, I kept those comments in there. So some of the discussions have, or some of the comments have been removed. Some of the comments remain. So it depends on the section. But I'll, I'll get you a, um, a draft version of where it stands now in the next like two days, like maybe by early next week. Awesome. Thank you. 
I, okay. I, I um, did I did ask Aaron if we could see it two weeks prior to meeting um, so I could fit it into getting it read. Yeah, I'm I apologize. I I am doing my best to um, to get through it. There's just there are there are a lot of irons in the fire. So it's um, I, I kind of do my best to get through things as I'm able to. But um, if we if it turns out that folks haven't had a chance to digest it yet, um, we could maybe just put together a schedule at the first meeting. So like a schedule for when the meetings will be held, time and days, and then um, maybe put together like an itinerary sort of, so to speak of like, this is what we hope to tackle and when, like to set up sort of a, um, a roadmap of how we wanna tackle the discussions or something, and then give people additional time to review it before the next meeting. Um, so if folks haven't had enough time, um, I'm not committed to jumping into it immediately. I'd still like to see it ahead of time in whatever shape it's in. And I'm gone half of August and the first week of September. So I got basically July to, to work through it. Okay. Um, so Aaron, 711. Yes. Um, what would you like to try first? 167 Henry Street or issue order of conditions for um, the UMass culvert replacement? Um, I see um, Mark Beaudry in the audience for 167 Henry Street. So why don't we just dive into that one? Um, uh, Kristen from SWCA is not on yet. So um, okay. I'll pull Mark in if that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, so this is an informal meeting, commissioners, just to introduce us to the project and kind of get our initial feedback um, on kind of permittability of the proposed work. Hi, Mark, you should be in the meeting. There we go. Um, Hi, Aaron. The uh, Bob Klinger, yep, Bob Klinger should be in as well. He just joined. If okay. you could uh, allow him in also. Yes. <clears throat> there he is. Good. All right. Now that uh, Bob is in. Um, Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Mark Beaudry. I'm with Civil Works New England. And uh, with me tonight is uh, is Bob Klinger. And uh, Bob and Karen Klinger purchased um, uh, 167 Henry Street back in November. And um, they uh, started talking. Uh, they, they realized pretty quickly that they needed, um, you know, to get some uh, storage space on, on the property. And because it, it, it is a rental at, at you know the time, although it's a single family house, it is a rental. And um, so there's uh, four bedrooms in there that could potentially have four, you know, people, you know, they're thinking students and whatnot at UMass and whatnot to, um, um, uh, you know, uh, and th they needed a place for, uh, you know, some make sure to have adequate parking. They needed a place for a snowblower, a uh, lawnmower, things like that. And they just really wasn't any suitable storage um, space. So they they actually started talking to a uh, to an architect who came up with a plan that initially had a uh, a garage that was uh, lined up with the with the back of the uh, back of the house with a uh, with a mudroom on it. And um, so they were. Uh, they started realizing that, um, you know, there was some some wetlands in there and they I think they started talking to uh, to Aaron and uh, realized pretty quickly that they had a. Um, uh, quite an array of resource areas on the property, and um, so they ended up uh, engaging uh, our firm and I got uh, Andrea Kendall of LEC involved to delineate the wetlands. And um, we do have, as part of the submission materials, a, uh, a sketch of the wetlands that Andrea prepared 
We had since um, got the uh, the property surveyed because, frankly, there was a question about whether the the, the 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 existing house was even on the property. If you looked at GIS information, so it is fortunately. Um, but that we got that surveyed, we got the resource area surveyed, and we started doing some planning on it, and uh, realized that where the wetland BVW line was, uh, you know, we riverfront area. Um, there's uh, it's right near the infamous, um, you know, uh, uh, Salamander Carter underneath uh, Henry Street. So, looking at all these various, um, you know, uh, you know, environmental elements and constraints, they uh, we started realizing that there's, uh, you know, this is uh, a, a, certainly a, a challenging project more than anyone envisioned. So, what we um, what we wanted to do is get a put a, a design plan together, which, you know, the clingers already realized that they um, they needed to, you know, basically move away from the plan that they had originally envisioned. And they've done quite a bit of, uh, you know, comp, you know, uh, adjustment to that. They moved the garage forward. They, uh, they downsized it, um, you know, et cetera. So um, what we wanted to do because of the various issues here, um, including, not only under the State Wetlands Protection Act, but also under the Amherst bylaw, we wanted to have an informational meeting with the commission just to, um, you know, discuss the project with you and, um, you know, uh, get some feedback from the commission. And, um, you know, uh, hopefully we can come up with something that we already see as being kind of a win-win for the for the clingers and the town and uh, the environment to, uh, you know, before we did a formal notice of intent filing. So, that's where we're at. Um, the uh, Aaron, if you wanted to pull up first of all the uh, yeah, these are that's the existing conditions plan. And oh, yeah, my that's my cover letter. Maybe what we could do first is uh, pull up the sketch that Andrea Kendall did for LEC. <clears throat> That's the. Hmm. Sorry, there was a lot of attachments. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So um, the uh, you can see the blue line, which would be the uh, the bank on the east side or uh, house side of uh, Fort River, and um, then there's a the the orange line is BBW, and. Um, you can see you'll be able to see on the existing conditions plan better, but the the uh, that the backyard is currently mowed. Uh, there's a stockade fence around it, and you can kind of see it on this aerial. But the um, oh, by the way, you can see on this plan how the GIS has the house actually over the property line. So we got that figured out. But um, the wetland actually extends into the the backyard, and. Um, so uh, the clingers have already stopped mowing that. We they realize they we need to let that um, restore back into a uh, uh, you know a, a natural wetland, and we can talk more about that moving forward. But if you then extend it off that bank, you know 100 feet and 200 feet, basically the entire property is within riverfront area. So um, and then to make it more interesting, um, the uh, the Salamander Crossing is just north of the property, and um, that uh, you know it is basically has created a uh, vernal pool situation. I don't believe it's certified yet, but um, talking with Aaron, it really doesn't matter according to the regulations. So um, we are presuming that that is a a that you know a, a vernal pool that would have the regular you know the the Amherst regulations as far as um, you know various uh, no disturb and setback and whatnot. So. I think maybe we don't necessarily have to go, Aaron, to the existing conditions plan, but maybe we can go right to our. Oh, let's go to the first of all the uh, Marie the the architect's sketch. We can touch on that real quick, which is uh, right. No. Sorry, I'm not sure which is which. Yeah. Okay, this one I think maybe. Yep, there you go. So, this is from GIS information. It did show the wetland, but to a point, but nothing, not nothing real, anything else. So didn't show the river, didn't show the, uh, obviously the, uh, 
you know, the, 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 you know, the, the issues related to the vernal pool and whatnot. So the architect prepared this plan showing a, um, that the mudroom connection with a 24 by 22 garage with a, uh, a, a double door and, um, going beyond the extent of the, uh, the current driveway and then having a pretty good sized deck off the back of the uh, house in a mudroom and garage going down to existing grades. So we realized that that was gonna be problematic from relative to the local regs. So we uh, working with the clingers, we came up with the design that we had on our, on our civil work site plan that we can, um, we can talk about. Great, thank you. So this shows pretty clearly the uh, the bank, which is the B flag lines, the BBW lines uh, that extends into the backyard, as you can see beyond the, the fence line. Yeah, and then um, it also shows uh, the fifty foot no disturb from the BBW. Now that that's presuming that I think conservatively that the entire wetland area is vernal pool. So, but anyway, the, um, so the 50 foot no disturb off the wetland, you can see that in, in the backyard currently, there's a, there's a raised planting bed, there's the fence, the, like I mentioned, the wetland was being mowed. Underneath where we show the deck here is a landscape tie, um, like a uh, terraced area going down to the hill, uh, going down the, the, the slope in backyard that's, uh, you know, there's a lot of work that's been that happened here. Now, this house was built in 1985, by the way, which is really important. So it obviously uh, predated the, wet, the the Riverfront Act. Um, so off of that, um, good, the good news is, is that the, the, the railroad ties, I think just absolutely coincidentally fell 50 feet off of the, um, the, the BBW, which is good. Then if you put, you look at the 60 foot building setback, you know, that's where, because the part of the existing house is actually in the, the, the 60 foot already. So we realized pretty quickly that the mudroom addition or the, in, in particular, the garage was going to be within that area. So we wanted to comply with the local regs as, as, as best we could. So um, the next line would be um, the, uh, the 100 foot, I won't touch on the riverfront just yet, but the 100 foot buffer zone is shown that goes well into the uh, front yard, almost to the front property line. And um, that is uh, what we could conservatively call the, the 100 foot off of the vernal pool as well. So you can, you can see there's a lot of work development area, including the, uh, the, the driveway, the, the house, the, uh, um, the, you know, the, all the existing, you know, the, the, the landscape ties, timbers, all that stuff in the backyard is all within that area currently. Um, the, the driveway that was put in in 1985 is gravel, which I put that in quotation fingers because as you know, gravel gets very compact over time and it's uh, you know substantially impervious right now. And right now the house just has downspouts that dump on the ground. They flow across the driveway area which causes a lot of icing problems, uh, you know, a little bit of erosion and whatnot. And then it just sheets down the backyard heading towards the wetland. Um, so we can talk about uh, the, the, the mitigation moving forward. And um, so what the cleaners wanted to do is um, move the garage to a point in the mudroom that it, it, it complies with the 60 foot building setback the uh, we, we show the deck off the back, which we think is much smaller and reasonable that um, stays 50 feet off of the wetland area. And then um, they're also calling for um, re replacing of the driveway. And they, they wanted to do this before they even were aware of this, just because of the condition of the drive was to basically replace it with a permeable paver type solution. And uh, now you can see that parking area on the side that is existing. So we are we are holding the the limits of the existing uh, driveway, but replacing it entirely all the way out to the street with um, with permeable pavers. Also, there's no 
uh, walkway to the front door right now. So they wanted to have a walkway going to the front door that's also permeable. And right now there's people just tracking over the grass and it's getting kind of disturbed and rutted and whatnot. So they wanted to definitely improve that. And something that's important to point out is that the septic system right now is in the uh, in the front yard, right in front of the house, which obviously would be uh, is really the only place that it could be put on this property. So um, anyway, that's constraining the the, uh, the 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 land further as to where the uh, that the, the building could potentially go. So um, I think much sorry, Mark. This is Jen, the chair. I just want to let you know. We're going to spend about five more. I have about five more minutes to spend okay. in the discussion. Um, if you want to hear from the commissioners, just because we have another agenda item before seven yeah. thirty hearing. So what? Thanks, Jen. What we're um, real quick. What we're proposing to do is that this is considered a redevelopment, and uh, because we are, if you look at ten percent of the riverfront area, it'd be nineteen hundred nineteen forty one square feet. I've got the table that was uh, that I that I provide of areas that I provided to Aaron. But um, the, uh, yeah, there we go. So um, the uh, total riverfront, excluding the river area itself, was 19,400, we'll call it, round up. The existing development area in the riverfront was uh, 3,118, which, by the way, if this was new development, you could do 10% or 5,000 square feet, whichever is greater. So we're under that. 5,000 square feet, which is good. The existing is 16.1%. Proposed work in the riverfront is uh, 3,375, which is 17.4, I think, 1.3% more. So um, what the, uh, because this is redevelopment, what we'd be looking to do is provide mitigation for the area um, that's increasing over existing uh, conditions. So you know, we'd be looking at, you know, I think it's uh, 250 or 254 square feet additional. So we, in theory, need to do 514, I think, square feet of mitigation at two to one. So the clingers are willing to do that. And we can talk about all that. We're, we're, we're talking about putting all of the stormwater runoff into the ground, you know, which is allowed. And uh, even though single family homes don't have to meet the stormwater standards, as you know, we are proposing to do that. We think it's an improvement over existing conditions. And we, um, you know, with the with the driveway um, improvements, you know, we're, we're looking at, uh, I think, a really substantial improvement over um, existing conditions here. So that's kind of, that's that's where we're at. Um, you know, I'm happy to answer any uh, any questions you might have, but. We're hoping the the commission can kind of look favorably on this, and that we can get um, get this approved as a redevelopment project. And um, you know, I, I think it'll be a good thing for the town, the environment, and obviously the clingers. So uh, it will meet their needs for the property. So that's where we're at. Okay, thanks, Mark. Um, commissioners, does anyone have any clarifying questions on the details of the project? Aaron, could you maybe pull up the proposed plan just so we can have the visual of the proposed garage and mudroom with respect to the 100 foot buffer to, to name one of them of the vernal pool. Um, so yeah, commissioners, any clarifying questions? Not seeing any. Okay, um, my first cut on this mark is this is gonna be very difficult to permit. Um, between, I mean, the vernal pool is really the most difficult thing here, um, but just the town bylaws itself, it's very, it's going to be very difficult to mm -hmm. permit. Um, sitting here, I'm like, you know, I appreciate that you guys have gone through iterations to try to move out of the resource areas and I'm hearing all of that. I'm sitting here thinking about anything else we could do and I just, it's not a clear path to me. Um, Commissioner, does anyone else have a kind of guidance to provide? Michelle? Um, so I know we talked about the redevelopment and the um, being inside the out the riparian. So 
Um, there is the inner and outer proportions, which I'm not sure we have straight here, but regardless of that, uh, what we haven't talked about is being in the completely within the hundred foot no disturb buffer of the vernal pool. Right. And, you know, it's not just one vernal pool. This is an entire functioning complex, which is the, um, you know, continues all the way to Pine Street. So just thinking about, um, the ecological context here, in addition to just being within that 100 foot no disturb buffer, which is a local regulation. So there is a, a lot of exceeding regulatory thresholds here, um, and a lot of like riverfront, BBD, vernal pool. And yeah, I, I agree with you. I'm not seeing a path forward for this. I don't think that the potential mitigation that could be done on this site could, um, could really cover what is going to be impacted. Yeah, I agree. That's well said, Michelle. It's like three overlapping, difficult, you know, uh, by I, I, resource areas that we have to deal with here. If I may, the you know the alter one alternative would be to just leave it the way it is, which obviously isn't a good thing either. So, okay. Um, any other commissioners? Andre. Yeah, I've, I've got something, uh, you know, yeah, I don't know okay. if you can hear me. Uh, okay, so uh, I think the two of, uh, you know, you and Michelle uh, have both uh, put it in, uh, in, in a really good context, I think. <laughs> I, I can't follow that up very well. I would say it, everything looks very, looks pretty messy as it is right now, and I would need to I'd actually need to get over there and uh, take a look at it and um, get a little bit of a better look at the plans. But it, I agree with uh, with with the two of you. It it it's you're you're up against uh, you're up against a few hard, um, uh, fairly hard uh, uh, challenges or backstops, hard uh, regulations that are going to be difficult to uh, justify uh, from from what I'm seeing right now. Thanks, Andre. And I really, we really have to spend only a couple more minutes on this. Can any commissioners think of anything um, that would be guidance that would permit this to be permittable? I'm, I'm trying, Mark, you know, I know that this has been an effort to get in front of us and I appreciate that inform, you know, I appreciate what you're trying to communicate first and foremost with us. Um, I'm struggling <laughs> to see a path, um, but commissioners, does anyone else? see a path forward for this in a way I'm not seeing anything well, I think we fully comply with the state regs and really only what is uh in question here I think is the local regulations yeah, it's our bylaws yeah yeah so and I, I I I believe there are provisions in the bylaw for uh for relief and under certain uh circumstances and I think this is a um unique kind of property that is um that I, I think would be appropriate for consideration without the you know the the commission being concerned about setting a precedent so uh, inside the hundred foot no disturb of a vernal pool mark is a really really tough one yeah this commissioner has a long this commission has a long precedent there for being taking that very seriously in this town I have heard that <laughs> yeah so that is and you know that is a really really tough one <laughs> um so andre is your hand still up because you want to talk or because it's still up um not okay okay um all right well i think that's our feedback for better or worse um and we appreciate the effort um and i guess we'll see, see what happens <laughs> yeah is there any point jen in um hanging around to maybe discuss it a little bit more after the next hearing or should we just call it a night and and i obviously the clingers need to uh you know we need to all talk and um maybe we can continue some dialogue with aaron and um andre if you if you if you wanted to, uh, we'd be happy to meet you on site to uh, kind of walk through everything, if that's appropriate, or any other commission members. Um, we're not in the public hearing realm right now, so 
I think that would be okay. So um, anyway. Yeah, I think um, communicate with Erin and she's the best conduit to the commissioners to figure okay. out what's appropriate moving forward. All right, very good. Um, thank you so much for your time. It was, uh, you know, not great news for the for the clingers and but it was uh something that was um certainly I, we appreciate your frankness and um so anyway we'll uh Aaron thank you for uh working with us on this and getting us before the commission thank you for hearing us uh you know informationally so uh, we really appreciate the feedback and we'll uh we'll we'll see what happens okay thanks Mark thanks, thank Have you Mark bye. Good night. All right. Do you think we can do the order of conditions for you, the UMass culvert replacement in five minutes? We have Kristen. Um, let me just see. What um five minutes. Um yeah, we let's give it a shot. Why not? Okay. Okay. <laughs> sure. Should I should we do the continuations of those two hearings? quickly the 730 and the 735 it's totally at your discretion Jen yeah let's do that commissioners um I need I will read it a motion to continue the public hearing for lot 13 Olympia Drive to July 12th 2023 at 735 p.m so moved seconded seconded by Cameron voice vote Andre aye Michelle Aye. Cameron. Aye. Uh, Alex. Aye. And I'm also an aye. Unanimous. Um, the next is a move, a motion to continue the public hearing for 246 College Street notice of intent to set to July 12, 2023 at 7.40 p.m. So 730. 7.30, sorry. That's 7.30. Oh, 7.30. So Second. Moved. So moved Second. by Michelle, seconded by Cameron. Voice vote, Michelle. Aye. Cameron. Aye. Alex. Aye. Andre. I see him saying aye. 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 Got it. All right. Unanimous. Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> we hurt. We hurt. We got you, Andre. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and I'm going to bring Kristen in. So I did put draft orders of conditions into the OneDrive folder. It They did make it in there a little bit late this afternoon. Um, there, it's, it's a decent size order of conditions. Um, I would say pretty significant by way of like special conditions, but um, then we have our boilerplate as well. What would make the most sense, Jen? Do you want me to pull up the draft conditions and run through all of them? Um, or I'll defer to you on how you want to work that. Yep. Um, commissioners, if you guys can pull that up and take a look, if you haven't already, um, just to look it over and see if you have any questions. And then I'll just ask Aaron and Kristen, was that, were there any particular conditions of all of those that you wanna flag and discuss? If it's okay, I'll, I'll flag a couple that are just sort of standouts. Okay. That makes Great. sense. Um, let yeah. me just do a quick share screen. Um, I mean, these are none of these are conditions that everyone hasn't seen before. Um, right. So these are pretty standard. Um, and some of these again are very boilerplate, so they might might be like no plant, no you know only native plantings, you know, so you know things like that that are just our standard boilerplate um, and no snow storage and resource areas and stuff. Um, so let me just see here. Um, you guys can see these on the screen, but I'm gonna just see if I can highlight some ones that I felt like were particularly important. Um, so. The requirement that during installation that there be an, a licensed engineer on site and that there be survey equipment basically to ensure that the installation is done to the you know inverts of pipes when they're installed are installed at the proper grades and also to make sure that um, fill volumes and stuff are installed to the proper elevations per the design that's been submitted to us. Um, 
that work shall be completed during low flow conditions. I think that the expectation here is hopefully to not have to do a dewatering plan. Um, mm -hmm. The site, uh, you know, in talking with with Kristen has a low water table and they're hopeful that they won't have to de dewater to a great extent, but um, there is a condition in here that it be done during low flow and appropriate weather conditions and that if it's wet, rainy or inclement weather that that the work shouldn't be done in, the, in that situation. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so a couple things which may warrant discussion or not, but permanent boundary markers placed at the limit of the restoration areas. So the restoration areas being the outlet side of the culverts where um, there's the plunge pools being installed. Um, so permanent demarcation there and the intent being that this is a restoration area and it's not going to be disturbed or otherwise altered in the future so that um, that should be marked with some in some capacity, whether it be boulders, split rail fencing, rebar, wetland marker, signage, something to that effect. Um, um, let me see, ones that stand out as being unique to this site. Um, okay, so weekly monitoring reports. Um, I figured that this, you know, installation of this culvert really should only take a few days, but obviously the installation of the plunge pools on the down slope side, down on the outlet side, might take a little bit more time to engineer and install, but um, the idea being, and the reason, quite frankly, that we do these weekly monitoring reports is to encourage them to install it quickly and to stabilize it quickly. So they don't want to be paying for monitoring reports for months and months. The hope is that they start the reports and within, you know, a matter of weeks, the, the site is stable. Um, and so the in erosion control inspection by a, um, a person who's competent in doing the inspections, um, as well as monitoring the mitigation area and then submitting weekly reports to me or to us. And then um, the other sort of specific one called out was there wasn't a whole lot of detail provided for dewatering. Now, while it is, uh, the hope is to do it when it's relatively dry, the dewatering is sort of a, a, a um, insurance policy, right? So if they're in there doing the work and the site is flooded and they do need to dewater, we should have some sort of dewatering plan. The final plans and, you know, part of this was just a matter of sort of rush to review and getting the final plan set today. Um, that there there was like a filter bag and there was a note about a dewatering plan but there wasn't an actual dewatering plan um, that I would expect to see for this so um, that the contractor who selected to do the work in advance of the start of constru construction will submit to me or and or the commission a dewatering plan for review and approval and that that should include what systems will be used for the dewatering and a diagram showing where the dewatering equipment will be installed during the dewatering activities. Um, other than that, they're pretty much our standard boilerplate um, for commercial projects. Thanks, Aaron. That all looks pretty good to me. Um, Kristen, is any of this, do you have any further info to provide? Is any of this for some reason not doable or surprising? No, none of it's surprising. I had a couple of questions um, and I can follow up offline if we're really pressed for time in the meeting here. Um, but one I wanted to just ask, just so you're not surprised, Erin, when I follow up, um, the level of on-site um, oversight required by the engineer, if that's not in there, just to make that clear. And then for the weekly reports for both the mitigation and the kind of construction monitoring, I just want to make sure I'm understanding what exactly is expected. If it's a PWS for the mitigation reporting, if it's a SESWI or somebody qualified, you know, is it is it kind of like a SWIP where there's like a rain threshold or is it just while the site is not stable or just kind of some of those little details? Mm -hmm. But we can talk offline if, if this isn't the right time to talk about that stuff. Yeah, no, I think those are all excellent um, questions and comments. I mean, my expectation for having an engineer on site would be to verify that things are being installed properly and mm -hmm. to, um, as they're being installed, checking the elevations to make sure, for example, that the culvert inverts are placed at the appropriate um, elevations, mm -hmm. that the um, compaction over the pipes is done properly, that um, the amount of fill being placed over the culverts is done properly and then also to the 
um, on the outlet side for the the plunge pools that that the um, elevations are being installed as they were designed. So basically to have the engineer on site for all of that process, but once it's installed, I don't think the engineer needs to be on site. So it's basically for, for the installation. Um, as far as the, the reports, um, I, I don't particularly um, require like a PWS or a, a SESWI or somebody who's, who's um, uh, certified for SWIP inspections as long as the person is is competent and we have a definition under our bylaw of you know what the expectation for competence is so um I would definitely refer to that but um you know generally speaking it's like we like if somebody comes to us and they're they've they've never done this they've never done this type of monitoring before mm -hmm. they've never done this type of work before um then we would probably say they're not qualified. But if they're, you know, if they can hold a straight face test as far as having some experience with site monitoring and um, uh, erosion control monitoring and stuff like that, I think in the past we've been, you know, relatively flexible um, as far as who's who's um, doing the oversight. Mm -hmm. And then I guess I just had one more question about the demarcation, the permanent boundary markers. Um, you know, one of the purposes of the restoration plan for the stream bank and the floodplain restoration was to incorporate more shade and wildlife habitat and woody cover. So again, we can talk about options offline. I don't want to, you know, suck up all the air in the room here with this, but, um, you know, like a really big boulder, which would potentially be unmovable without a machine might not really work. Um, right. Well, we can, we can, and maybe rebar is not really the safest. I don't know. We can talk about that. Um, yeah. Um, so a couple options and one that I might recommend in this particular case is um, a couple signs, um, just a couple signs that say wetland restoration area. Um, and I have a sample sign uh, that would good. work in like one or two of those I think would be sufficient, but okay, I'll definitely. defer to the commission if you have a like yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to suggest. Sorry, Michelle. And I think it would help to have like an informational component yeah. here, especially. It's, Go a, ahead, it's a cool project. I think like calling attention to it would be beneficial and serve a couple purposes. So I'm all for science. Great. And it's an educational facility. It's university. Yeah. So maybe I'll turn right. it into a learning classroom, a teaching classroom or outdoor classroom or that kind of thing. That would be great. Yeah. yeah and it should be monitored for, really well. for three years. So that would be really cool to incorporate something like that. I was going to ask, I didn't hear you say anything about that, but I was assuming that there was going to be post-construction two-year monitoring. Yeah. So that's built into the sort of standard boilerplate um, okay. language for um, the mitigation that the um, three years of three years of monitoring to make sure that there's 50% success. Okay, commissioners, any other thoughts as we're talking through this? Alex is trying to raise his hand. Am I muted? <laughs> no, you are we not hear muted. You. We can hear you. Okay. Hey, go ahead, Alex. Um, I have to admit, I do not have this project crisply in my head. My question is informational. Is aquatic connectivity an issue in this project? Yeah, the per, one of the purposes of the project is to improve the aquatic connectivity. So um, originally there were two 18 inch um, clay pipes. And when the university was installing the underground conduit between the basically the campus and the new apartments up at the north end of this gravel road, um, they deemed that they couldn't burrow under those clay culverts because they were really old. They were from the 60s and they were really fragile. So they replaced them in kind. But when they replaced them in kind with two new double barrel 18 inch culverts, um, they put this weird uh, thing at the, at the toe, at the outfall, that was basically like concrete curbing. So it really created an aquatic disconnection. And also, you know, double barrel 18 inch culverts aren't ideal. So um, Long story short, it's been upgraded to an open bottom arch culvert. Yeah, you know, I heard plunge pool mentioned, which is why I asked the question. Because um, that means 
water is dropping off the pipe. And yeah, there's a pretty significant elevation drop between the culvert inlet, which is on the eastern side of the road and the culvert outlet on the western side. Um, so I think before when the contractors put in those concrete curbings, they were just trying to create kind of like a velocity diffuser. There really isn't that much aquatic flow to be totally honest, but um, these plunge pools, what they'll do is they'll maintain some water during periods of low flow so that they'll still be able to kind of maintain this aquatic connectivity even during periods of low flow. So it's not really, it's not a velocity diffuser or like a splash pad. It's more just like a little pocket to, that will retain some water because there isn't a whole lot of flow. I mean, we, we called it a perennial stream because it's really the same system as the stream to the south coming out of that 60 inch culvert. Um, but really there's this huge wetland on the east side and the water is draining through those two separate culverts. Yeah. So most of the flow is going to the 60 inch. I think I'm remembering this project, but I'm just a little worried that I'm remembering it wrong. So um, there will be con aquatic connectivity. <laughs> yeah. This is what's there now, Alex, mm -hmm. just for perspective. Um, yeah. And it's going to be replaced with a basically restored um, stream uh, where there'll be na more nat. Right now, it's like somebody dumped a bunch of riprap at the outlet and then put these repurposed granite slabs here which this was never permitted um so the idea being that the because the you can see the elevation drop coming down you're like coming down the steep hill that where the outlet comes when the water comes out it'll go into a natural plunge pool and then in another natural plunge pool and another natural plunge pool to avoid having this steep and we'll slope have, and we'll have an arch culvert Exactly. Yep. Instead uh, of these open, two bo open bottom arch culvert. Yeah. It'll be a significant, significant improvement over what's there right now and yeah. what was there before. Thank you. Great. All right. So, commissioners, any other questions about the orders of conditions specifically or comments? Kristen, are you good? I'm okay. good. Okay. Um, and we will, once we do get these orders, um, we will, we will include them on a separate sheet on the plan so that they will be part of the bid package, part of the specs, and the contractors will absolutely have a copy on, on site. Okay, thanks. Do we need a motion to approve this, Erin, or? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yep, and I'll pull that up right now for you. Okay, so, yeah, so that's a long one. Does somebody wanna read it? Do you want me to read it? Oh, well, actually, you know what? I. I kind of um, okay, somehow managed to not get it in there. Um, if you bear with me just a moment, I can write it for you. Or if somebody wants to try to take it, um, they're more than welcome to. Um, I think what we should do is say it's a motion to approve the previously discussed and referenced order of conditions for um, University of Massachusetts at Amherst after the fact approval of installation of underground utility conduit between North Village Apartments and UMass Physical Plant and replacement of previously replaced two 18 inch culverts with eight foot by four foot by two inch, two inch arch culvert, removal of fill previously placed in the stream with proposed stream bank and stream outlet restoration at 950 North Pleasant Street. So moved. So, <laughs> uh -oh, who got the second on that? I didn't hear. Is I'll that second. on? Alex will second. Okay, Alex is in the second. Voice vote, Michelle. Aye. Alex. Aye. Andre. Aye. Cameron. Aye. And I'm an I. It's unanimous. Thanks for all the hustle to get all those awesome conditions together, Aaron. Absolutely. And I'm psyched about this project, Kristen. I'm excited to see how it turns out. Thanks, we appreciate everybody's work. I know that this was a long process and we really appreciate the commission's time and Aaron, all your efforts, appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. You too, Thank Kristen. You for your work. Have, a, have a good night. Have a good Thanks. night. All right, sorry, running behind. Let's get to that hearing. 29 mil lane. 
Uh, um, Aaron, remind me. That oh, was Bruce. Uh, I think it's Brian. Brian. Yep. Oh, Bruce is our almost commissioner, right? And so is Jason. Okay. <laughs> All right. So they've come back and are no longer within the 50 foot is what I read. Correct. Yes, they moved out of the 50 foot. That was our major guidance. That Correct. was our major guidance. That was the challenge. Um, so Brian, I think you're here. I'm here. Okay. Do you want to give us a kind of brief update since our last meeting? Yes. So um, we met with the property owners, clients, and they've agreed to uh, actually delete the whole um, gravel pathway. So we're not encroaching, we're not on the uh, 50 foot buffer as previously shown in the drawing. Um, they decided that shortening it didn't do it any justice. So now we're just going to maintain it as a lawn mowed grass. Okay. And drive around? Yeah, as frequently as needed, they'll just drive across the grass with a lawn tractor and, and such. And they figured it's not that much uh, traffic, so they'll drive around. It's not much automobile traffic as it is like a golf cart moving stuff from around the barn or uh, landscaping tools. Like okay, well, commissioners, that's what we asked for. Brian, thank you for figuring navigating away to this point. Yeah. Um, I'm just looking. Sorry, I'm pull. I've been trying to pull up the plan, and for some reason, yeah. Um, I. <laughs> Me too. I, I guess I didn't man. I didn't manage to get it in the folder, which it, um I thought okay. I checked and double checked, but here it is. Um, so it shows the driveway moved out of the 50 foot um and the you know the erosion controls it looks looks like are partially within but that's temporary and so that uh gravel path that comes from the north heading south across the front of the proposed addition would actually just be maintained as grass no longer I, that five foot wider driveway right there um yeah Above your pointer, uh, that's just going to be maintained as, as grass. And the proposed uh, gravel driveway down below is actually current and would just be maintained as so. Okay, so you're saying this section is going to just be grass? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, commissioners, any clarifying questions? I don't see anything. Okay. The one thing that does pop to mind and I'm is demarcation of the 50 foot buffer. I realize that this is maintained as lawn. Um, so I was wondering if there's any plans, Brian, to do any kind of border along there at all that could also act as kind of a permanent demarcation of that buffer. Um, there is nothing planned and um, it's kind of very close to the building. So I don't know what they could do to actually establish something to mark that it's, I mean, they're gonna maintain it as a lawn. Yeah. Yeah, and the area on the other side of the- Yeah, the other, is other side is, yeah. yeah uh, basically maintained uh, just, with the uh, the plantings that the wetland plantings and trees that they put up there. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm I'm comfortable with it as is, especially since they've removed that whole gravel driveway. Um, but commissioners, if anyone has any concerns, now is the time to raise concerns. Otherwise, let's talk about con conditions here. Then I'm just curious <clears throat> about your concern. Are you concerned about just encroachment or the, the traffic over the lawn or who knows what? Just It's more about consistency, honestly, Michelle, because I feel like we do this to pretty much every project where we are this close to a buffer and 
we want to make sure that that there's some sort of permanent demarcation, but I think this is a little bit of an outlier given that it's through the middle of <laughs> their like actual lawn and also given the other kind of no, like no mow and planted areas in the resource area, I feel like there's a lot of effort already to stay out of the resource area. So I'm um, acknowledging precedent, but also saying that this is a little bit of a different case, I guess. But I'm interested in your guys' input. Yeah, and if it's if it's helpful for me to pull up the plan, yeah. it doesn't actually show the. Um... We have a photo or something that would. I mean, yeah. so is it lawn to a no mow area? Like the fifty foot is sort of demarked by no mowing. On the or... other side, that it's a no mow, basically. Right, where there's yeah. a fence there and stuff. Um, let me let me pull up the photos again because I did take a ton of pictures, and so I think this will help to. Well, every everything is mowed to the fence. Correct. Um, so let me just get to the. So this is the lawn area that is being discussed, and um, uh, this yellow post right here is the fifty foot, like right square in the middle of the lawn. Um, these are the dry wells. This is the back of the barn existing. So this is the yeah. fence. So this is the lawn up to the fence. And then on the other side of the fence, this is where the wetland swale uh, intermittent stream is located. And so the natural area that Jen is referring to is on the other side. And that is, I wonder if I get another better picture of that. Um, you can yeah. kind of see it here too. So their tennis court is here. And then this location around the front of the tennis court um, adjacent to that wetland is it's like it's like a grassland back there as opposed to a lawn like back in this area here and that's the resource is that area behind the fence that's not mowed at all yeah so that you can see this there's an intermittent stream that comes down through here and then there's another um, intermittent stream that runs along the fence line the tree line that where that you can see all the trees in the back I think the fact that nobody is is expressing high con, high degree of concern about this means that we should move I mean, forward. I don't. I, it would be weird, right, in the middle yeah. of the lawn. So, I guess I'm just wondering. So, is there a three year monitoring for this? There's a three year monitoring for the the work that was done. So there was a restoration okay, right. that was done I over here, and that's why this is an amended order because there was several plantings done in this wetland swale as well as tree plantings um, which demarcate the 50 foot um, adjacent to the uh, tennis courts and so that's what the, we're monitoring yeah if you look at the NOI in total yeah. there's a lot of effort to protect the resource and buffer to the resource I mean, I guess that I was just thinking, have we ever put a condition on something which is um, like nothing is required unless some, it's triggered by some observation by you, in which case the commission reconsiders the condition like like a like a trigger for a. Um, we could we could put something like no, no further encroachment into the buffer zone. Um, is permitted. I mean, I, I'm not sure like how to sort of preface that right. other than to say like if there is if there I mean because there's no there's been really no violation or yeah. you know, right. anything there. I think um, the issue previously with the wetland swale slash intermittent stream that flows through there was basically it's a swale and they didn't know that it was uh, even a stream. Yeah. I was out there like during a major rainstorm and saw it flowing and I'm like that looks like a stream <laughs> and that's how we determined what it was and um now that they've actually repaved and fixed mill lane um last year it, it i haven't seen any flowing water in that swale but they're also currently uh they have drip lines through there to promote growth and the wetland area so they're irrigating the wetlands because if not it's all going to dry out and die they're tr they're watering the plantings basically yeah. because the, the plantings weren't doing well um 
without watering. So they're they're watering. So they're the making every effort. Yeah, of course. I think I think that given everything else going on the site, if you look at it as a whole package, I think we're okay here um, without requiring demarcation in the middle of the lawn. Um, so unless anyone's going to push back hard, I think we should move towards order of conditions. Um, do, do you want me to run through conditions again for this that I've drafted? Uh, what have we talked about on them? So it's the state and local boilerplate. Were there any special conditions, Aaron? There are some special conditions. But we're not uh, changing any of it with this. Are we changing order of the conditions with this amendment? Um, there's no there's no changes to the previous order. There are some special conditions relative only to the uh, and there's there's only there's only a handful of them, two handfuls of them. Um, just noting the reference to the the new plan set, um, the reference to the um, tying in the downspouts from the roof gutters to either uh, stabilized stone area, the um, existing dry well or to the daylit stable stone outlet that's or um, vegetated outlet that's existing on site. So just to make sure there's no new sort of point sources coming yeah. into play, they're tying into something existing um, that during demolition and construction that the heavy equipment has to remain on the stable driveway surfacing and not crossing over the erosion control boundary into the, the lawn area and into the 50 foot no disturb that debris um, from the demo is taken off site immediately. No vegetation may be removed. Um, no material may be stockpiled unless shown as a stockpile location on the plan. No equipment may be stored in the buffer zone overnight. Uh, no snow storage in the buffer zone. Uh, contractor shall sign the original order um, in the presence of the wetlands administrator, acknowledging they've read and fully understand the requirements. Applicant shall abide by and remain in compliance with all their state and federal regulations. And then this is one which is kind of unique to this site, again, because this is a close to 3,000 square foot personal gym and we're not requiring stormwater because it's not a commercial structure, is just that an acknowledgement that this was presented and approved as a residential project, not a commercial project. And as such, it's conditioned in perpetuity that the gym is for personal use by residents only, and that approval of commercial projects or de development would require stormwater management plan and long-term pollution prevention plan, which has not been completed as part of this permit approval. Agree. Was that okay with you, Brian? Is that all? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. comprehend it and it's all within our plans and intention. Great. Commissioners, any other concerns? I just had one last thing. Um, because it's a continuous lawn and we're not doing any kind of demarcation on that 50 foot, no disturb, maybe during construction, some kind of temporary fencing just to keep the equipment out of the no disturb because I don't know, I could see that being difficult to keep trucks and heavy equipment and sure. debris. Uh, yeah. We could we could do like a silt fence. Yeah, any any so you not have a, in. there's erosion control right along there. Yeah, okay. like a straw bottle would be fine and just okay. like a filter fabric fence that's not towed in. So you like you don't have to excavate it to tow it in, but more yep. as like a visual barrier. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Michelle. So I have additional conditions to the ones I listed, which I have as um, the gravel driveway that was previously um, uh, noted on the plan is going to be maintained as grass and that a temporary silt fence will be installed as a visual barrier during construction, but not towed in. Yep. That's great. Was that it? Was that a yes, Bren? Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. Okay. Yes. Okay. Great. So I think we're looking for a motion, commissioners. I move to issue the amended order of conditions for 29 Mill Lane to EP number 089686 with boilerplate state and local and special conditions as noted. Second. Got a second from Alex. Voice vote, Michelle. Aye. Alex. Aye. Second. Oh. <laughs> Andre, can you Andre, can you vote for us? 
I think it's frozen. Yeah, Cameron. Aye. I'm also an I. Since Andre was trying to second, I don't know how we can interpret aye. that. Aye. Oh, there you go. Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Yep. Not sure All what's right. happening. Yep. <laughs> All right, Brian, best of luck with the project. Time. I appreciate it. Okay. Take Good care. night. All right. I think that was our agenda. Am I missing anything? Um, just the continuation for um, oh, yes. 46 fairing, which is also continued to the um, July 12th meeting. OK. So we need a motion to continue public hearing for 49 fairing straight to July 12th, 2023 at 740. So moved. Seconded. Seconded by Cameron. Voice vote, Michelle. Aye. Cameron. Aye. Alex. Aye. Andre. Aye. And I'm also aye. an aye. All right. Is this when we start? Is this when we start crying? No. <laughs> this is where we have the party. You guys are in good hands. <laughs> you you don't need me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jen. Um, I mean, I just want to say thank you so much and your expertise and your guidance and your just maneuverability through hearings and meetings and keeping us uh, efficient and on on point and everything like just stellar, stellar and real, re really miss you and just very grateful to have had you um, on the board and um, just very sad, <laughs> sad for me to say goodbye for but, see Aaron, later to you. Thank you. But I think only as good as the team, this group has been like made it so easy to like figure, navigate these things. So I appreciate everyone's time and expertise. And also I'm, I am a you know, research hydrologist for the USGS and I'm not going anywhere. So I'm hopeful that in a more professional capacity, I can still be a resource to the town and to Aaron. Um, so I won't, that expertise doesn't go anywhere. You guys are stuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being willing to consult. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Um, I'm going to take you up on that. <laughs> yeah. <we might>. Okay. <laughs> you guys know where I am. <laughs> we'll see you in the, in the pickup line or yeah. like the, uh, battling for Jen, you run well, a good, you run a good meeting. Thanks, you have a great example to follow. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. I, I've absolutely. learned a lot. I was telling Michelle that I feel like it's like the area area of the most like required personal growth, like is figuring out how to navigate these meetings. It's tricky. And I couldn't definitely couldn't do it without this commission. So I feel like I've been super lucky. And that goes for Fletcher too. Who I can't believe. Oh yeah. Yeah. Fletcher. Fletcher has been, this yeah. is six years for me on the commission and Fletcher had been on maybe two years by the time I joined. So. Wow. wow. It's a lot of your life that you've, that you've given. And it's, it's not anything that uh, is taken lightly. It's a huge, huge service to volunteer so much of your time. So the, the town of Amherst is lucky to have had you both. And, uh, and with that, welcoming Bruce and Jason um, mm -hmm. to the board. And thank you guys for being in attendance tonight um, and listening in because it's it's good to see how Jen runs things. And uh, we're gonna be appointing a new chair at the next meeting um, and uh, taking, taking the baton and running with it. So it'll be good. I think whomever that is, that they're gonna be great. And there's no bad choices in this group, but it's going to be awesome. That's true. All right. I think we need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. And I'll add a commending Jen Fair on her six years of service to the town of Amherst. Hurrah. <laughs> Yay. Thanks. Voice vote, Michelle. Aye. Cameron. Aye. Andre. Aye for both. <laughs> Alex. Same here. Aye for both. And I'm also an aye. Thanks, guys. So long, Jen. Enjoy your Don't Wednesday Don't be strangers. <laughs> <laughs>
You know how to find me. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good night. Thank you Bye. so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.